Hey, what's going on? I'm your man, Chef Demetrius, AKA Hosanna Bax, and you're with me today in the Lunchbox. This is where we make lunch quick, easy, fresh, and amazing for you. Today, we're gonna have a great Vietnamese trifecta. Nice Vietnamese coffee, get you lit, get you popping, get you cracking at your downtime in the day. We got a beautiful banh mi, really live, really vibrant, grilled pork, cucumber carrot salad, cilantro, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. And then we're gonna finish it off with a quick mixed green salad with some of the same components and a fish sauce vinaigrette. Really excited to bring this to you today, so let's get it cracking. So you've made it to lunchtime. You've made it through that long morning. You've made it through your commute. You've been through those meetings. You dealt with the kids. Now it's your time, okay? So great way to get your kick back and get kind of amped back up is the Vietnamese coffee. So we've got our sweetened condensed milk right here that we've already poured into our glass. Now you can choose to ice this or you can choose to do it hot. I'm gonna choose to do it hot. If you really wanna do it hot, you can add a little bourbon, but I'm not gonna do that today. So you wanna take your uh, coffee that you've already brewed. Usually they would drip brew it. I don't have that set up here. Most people don't have that at home. So I like to use a little coffee and chicory from Cafe Du Monde. It's one of my favorites from uh, down in Louisiana. And you just wanna slowly pour right into your sweet and condensed milk, right down the center like that. This is gonna release essential oils, all that flavor. It's also gonna kinda of stir it for you as you pour. Now, I like to do the tall, the vente, as you might've heard it called. And of course, once you've got it, the only thing that you can do with it is give it a taste. Maybe one or two sugars and we'd have that perfect right there. I like that. That right there is gonna give you that energy, that kick to bring you through the rest of your day. Now, why don't we get into what we came to do, the bon me. All right, so for today's banh mi, we're gonna be using the grilled pork banh mi. So you wanna get a good, high quality tenderloin. Now it's gonna come in a sock like this. You're either gonna have two in here, or you're gonna have one. You wanna slice into it and cut into it, and juices flowing all over the place. It's not at all what you wanna do. You wanna take the top off like so, come over to your sink, and pull it out, just like a Christmas stocking. As you're pulling it out, you wanna kinda of slide down get some of that blood and some of that juice off of there bring it right back to your cutting board and you want to find your silver skin it's going to be here at the tip okay you can't chew that we got to get that off so you want to kind of cut through the membrane a little bit find a nice spot where you got it and get in there right up under the skin come poke out your other side angle up and cut out i'm going to flip over here Repeat the process. Get rid of that. We got one more side right here. And the thing that's great about when you're butchering meat, anytime you're working with meat, the meat is gonna tell you what to do. Okay, it's kind of like, it's, it's an animal. It's a fingerprint, right? It's an individual, it's unique. So each and every time the process is gonna be similar, but it's gonna tell you where and how to work. Okay, you do enough of these, you can do it in your sleep. I'm not even gonna lie, I got a dull knife right here and I'm banging it out so I know you can do it at home, okay? So it's gonna extend kind of into the head. You kind of see it's gonna peel over. It's gonna extend into this head. You'll see some of it right there. We're gonna get right inside there and get the rest of that out as well. And remember, you can't get lazy with this. You literally cannot chew this. This is not gonna have your end product being what you want it to be. Now, once you've got that off, you see the natural lay of it. You're gonna see me kind of toy with it a little bit right here and try to flatten it out just a little bit. This membrane is okay, okay? That's not necessarily fat, nor silver skin. Flip over here to the other side, we got a little bit more right there. Let's get rid of it there. And the thing that's great about this is it's so lean, okay? It's gonna bring in all that flavor that we marinated with. So when we hit it later with the fish sauce and the hoisin and we get it in that hot cast iron skillet, it's gonna caramelize with that Maillard reaction really well. So once we've got to a place where we've all cleaned it off, we're gonna start butchering it down. I like to start on the slope side, because we want long, lean, thin cuts on this as much as possible. So using your hand as your guide, get in there into the flesh and start peeling away. That's almost perfect right there. We're gonna give it a second pass as we keep cutting. When we're all done, we're gonna give it a second pass and get almost like strips out of it, okay? Now, if you're advanced enough, I'm not gonna do that here, but I'll tell you a little trick. 
You can par freeze this or freeze it and thaw it out part ways. If you've got a meat slicer at home, you can run this across your meat slicer, not your mandolin, your meat slicer, and it's gonna give you almost perfect, perfect strips each and every time, and that's gonna make the process even better. But if this was a beginner class, that's a super advanced class, okay? So we're not gonna do that here today. I'm just gonna keep cutting through this. And then keep in mind, how many sandwiches are you gonna make? Is it one for you? Do you have a lunch party coming over? Is this Super Bowl Sunday? As you're going, you know that this is about one sandwich right here. So your yield in a tenderloin is gonna be anywhere between four and five sandwiches if you're doing it right, okay? Also keep in mind, if you look, the shape has maintained the same shape that I had when I started. That's what you want. So I started with the top fat part on the sock and it thinned out like that's how you want it to keep remaining that way the whole time that you're cutting it down. And if you get these little pieces, that's okay because we're gonna use those too. Lovely. And really just, you know, just let your fingers be your guide. You don't have to, you know, you have five senses. And the thing that's great about cooking and the way that I like to look at it is you wanna use all five of your senses. You're not just gonna use just your taste buds or just your eyes. Those might be the initial strong points that you're using, but you know, the sense of touch is huge. You know, this cooking is all touch. And it's not just touch with your hands either, it's touch with your soul, it's touch with your heart. You gotta really feel what you're doing. So use your hand as your guide. As you're coming through, you're gonna know, and you'll see when I do the cucumbers, you're gonna know if you're getting close to your finger. You're gonna know. You're gonna have that self-preservation. You're gonna know where you're at. Trust yourself, trust your skills. You don't have to go fast like me. You can take your time, you can go slow. And I'm gonna take that whole stack, and I'll, and I'll just, just to show you guys, I'm gonna break it down a little bit. We're gonna run through it just one more time, real quick, okay? This is just gonna give it more surface area to cook faster. Like I said, let that, let the, the, the marinade that we put on here caramelize, let that product, that, that meat product, get that Maillard reaction going. Just more surface area for flavor, big flavors. I don't even wanna grab a bowl. It's real simple. We're gonna put our pork we just did right there in that bowl. We grab our fish sauce. This stuff goes a long way, okay? Fish sauce is gonna have that nice, earthy, kind of umami flavor to it, okay? This is gonna be in the background. It's gonna be in this, and it's gonna be in our spread. So it's gonna really marry everything together. And then we're just gonna set that off to the side, onto the next. So next we're gonna go with the cucumbers, okay? This is hugely important for the salad that goes in the bar meat. A lot of times what happens, especially in the Western Hemisphere, we wanna pack these sandwiches full of, full of meat and we miss out on all those good, fresh, live, vibrant flavors, okay? So the salad is super important because the salad component of a bon mi is much more integral to the sandwich than the meat itself, okay? So we got two really live, vibrant, beautiful mini cucumbers. We wanna take off the ends with the stems. And you can do the same thing with English cucumber. You can do standard cucumbers. I like to use the little guys because they're a little more concentrated in flavor. And honestly, for something like this, they're a little easier to work with. So I'm just gonna lengthen like so. And I'm gonna go right in, nice and thin. Use my fingers as a guide once again. A little chunky piece. Now, this is something you can also do lengthwise uh, with your mandolin. There's mandolin attachments that can do this. I'm just partial to using my knife. It's just the feel of it that I appreciate. Funny story when you're using a mandolin, please make sure you're using the guard. Please make sure you're using the guard, okay? Or buy one of those nice metal gloves, okay? But if you're just using your knife, like I said, let your feel of your knife and your fingers kind of be the guide for you. And don't be afraid to test your skills a little bit. So we're gonna go right into our bowl right now, like so. And we want about a 50-50 mix of carrots and 
of cucumber. So I went with the pre-shred carrot. I don't think there's any reason that you need to be at home trying to cut a carrot like I just did. If you've never done that before, trust me, it's gonna take you forever. If you don't have the mandolin attachment, it's gonna take you forever, okay? You don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go right in with my shredded carrot. And then we're gonna do a quick pickle with this, okay? So I'm gonna use the same bowl. I've got white wine vinegar on hand. That's what I have on hand. If that's what you have on hand, that's what you're gonna use. I'm gonna show you how to take your white wine vinegar and make it into a rice wine vinegar. The flavor profile is gonna be almost exactly the same. I remember showing a prep cook how to do this years ago, and he didn't believe me. And he had some choice words for me in Spanish, and he didn't believe that I could do it, but when it was done, he was absolutely amazed. And it's a trick I know personally that he uses to this day. So you wanna get your vinegar in there. You wanna come in with a little bit of white sugar, not brown sugar, not stevia, white sugar, okay? And just whisk that in. Just until that sugar starts to dissolve. It's still gonna have the same, you know, kind of vibrant, uh, uh, acidic kind of flavor, but we've added another layer of depth. And once you've got that incorporated, we're gonna go right into our salad right here. And then we're gonna come back again with our trusted fish sauce. Okay, now to be perfectly honest with you, I don't like the depth in that. You really want it to be more submerged than it is in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it back one more time. And here's the thing about cooking. It's not rocket science, guys, okay? If you're short on something, you didn't get something right, something's too dry, add a little water. You need a little more dressing, make a little more dressing. It's really, it's nothing to be panicked about, okay? It's nothing to be panicked about at all. A lot of people say, oh, I don't like to cook, I don't like the pressure, so on and so forth. Make it fun, make it fun. Make your mistakes. And let me tell you something, making your mistakes in the kitchen, that's where your skills come from. Anybody who's ever cooked in their life knows that's what I'm talking about. Your skills come from the mistakes that you make, okay? I remember my first time on the line, I thought I was the man, okay? We got about 250 covers for lunch. All I gotta do is sear some salmon. I'm dropping 28 pieces of salmon on the ground, okay? Huge mistake, never made that mistake ever again, okay, ever again. Now they call me the Salmon King, but that's for another episode, all right? Look, I've got it incorporated, there we are. That's much more where I want it to be, right there. That's where you want it to be. We're submerged, it's in there, and let it sit. Now, if you've got the time, and you wanna know another little trick, a lot of times when people that talk about pickling, well, chef, you can't pickle it. You didn't, you didn't add any heat to it. You didn't put on the heat. You can turn your burner up, set this thing off to the side, as close as you can get it without it getting actually hot. Just let it sit there. Don't put it on the flame. Let the flame t t tickle and touch it a little bit. And that's gonna go ahead and set that pickling process off for you. Because what I want out of this is I want it to be more like a dressing. I don't want it to be an actual pickled process. All right, one thing that's hugely important when you're dealing with the banh mi is it's the spread. No, not the pate. Those of you that know, know there's a pate that goes in the banh mi. We're not doing that today. But what we are doing is we're definitely doing the spread. If you don't have the spread, I've seen a lot of the larger sandwich chains try to say they're gonna do a banh mi. It doesn't have that same taste in the back of your mouth because nothing's coating your tongue, nothing's coating your palate. The spread isn't there. What a lot of people miss about the spread is they say, hey, we've got butter on the bread. Or they say, hey, we've got mayonnaise on the bread. Traditional banh mi is gonna have a butter mayonnaise mix with a touch of our fish sauce, okay? Sometimes even a little lime juice. I'm not doing the lime juice today because the way I did the, uh, the pickled veg, but I'm definitely gonna do the butter and the mayonnaise spread. So let's take our half a cup of butter, we've got half a cup of uh, mayo. If you're really fly, you can make the mayo yourself, okay? I've done it on occasion, I'm not doing it today. Okay, this is just your regular mayo that you've got in the fridge and just get that all mixed up and incorporated. I like to use um, room temperature butter, okay? Let it get soft. You're also okay if you put that butter in the microwave for, you know, a couple 10, 20 seconds, something like that. Um, do not put that butter in the microwave to completely melt, because if you do that, you have completely lost uh, your viscosity, you've separated the oil from the milk solids, and that's not what we want. We want to fold an oil product, which is the mayonnaise, into that butter product, okay? You see my spat wasn't getting it done. 
That was a bit of a mistake, like we talked about. So I brought out my board of whisk. And the whisk is really getting incorporated in there real nice. Okay, me personally, and this is a true story, at my house, I've got a, uh, a small tub of this. Um, and then I can't believe it's not, you know what, in the fridge, okay, with this in it, this mix in it, because we make a lot of bond at the house. It's one of our favorites. Um, and I keep it in there. It'll keep for, you know, like standard product, maybe two weeks, 10 days, two weeks. Um, you know, that's up to you how long you want to keep stuff in your fridge, as long as it's fresh. And you see, I just went in with my fish sauce, just a touch, but just bring it together. I can, as just standing here, I can smell that that's the smell that I want. Like I said, you gotta cook with your senses, okay? I know this is what I've got. I can see the viscosity of it. Okay, Snape is beautiful, nothing's broken. It's all together. Mr. Whisk has done his thing, and I can smell the fish sauce in there. We set that aside with our pickled mix, and we're ready to go. I know a lot of times at home, we don't have access to a, a, a grill, you know, especially the Vietnamese style grill that would actually get used for something like this, uh, or even the grill that you would have in your house as cast iron. A lot of people don't have overhead hoods, um, or you just don't wanna go through the drama of getting all the uh, charcoal and everything ready. So uh, we're gonna replicate that process, that idea, some of those flavor components here inside the house. So I've got my cast iron skillet and it's cracking. I got this thing smoking. I'm gonna be using butter because I want some of those butter solids, some of that brown butter to kick up, to kind of start that caramelization that we're gonna do on the meat here. And we're, we're not gonna overcrowd the pan. So I'm not actually gonna use all the meat that, uh, that, we, that we prepared. I'm gonna use enough meat for one sandwich, okay? So you know what's going right there. Let it move around a little bit. And we're gonna drop in some of this marinated pork, enough for one sandwich. I'm telling you right now, I can smell it already. I wish there was a way for you guys, through your screens, to feel that, to smell that, to see that. We got our smoke popping, spread out a little bit. And a lot of times what I see is people, people are skillet wigglers. People want to grab the skillet and do this number and shake it all over the place. Okay, we don't want to do that. We want to let it sit. Let the, let, let the product do its thing, okay? You can see around some of these edges, you're already starting to caramelize a little bit. We really wanna replicate what it's like when that meat's on the grill and it starts to really char up, okay? We're not gonna get it just perfect. There's another step that we're gonna do at home to kinda cheat the process. So I'm gonna show you guys, but we don't wanna mess around with it too much. We wanna let the pan do its thing. Especially a good quality cast iron pan that's been seasoned like this a lot, washed properly with hot water and kosher salt hot water and kosher salt, not Dove Enjoy, okay? It's gonna do the work for us of making sure that the product doesn't stick and that that smoke that's coming off kind of gets into the product as well. And I can see it as I'm flipping it around here. We're starting to get some of those, some of those darker spots, those charred spots that I talked about, but we're not quite there. We're gonna let it go, all right? Now, we're doing the pork because it happens to be my favorite. I know a lot of people, dietary restrictions, uh, religious restrictions, or just personal preference don't want to use pork. You can do the same process with the chicken. You can do the same process with um, beef. I like to use a tenderloin or a tri-tip myself. And with some of the new stuff that's coming out, you can do really fun stuff. Beyond Meat just came out with the chicken. Um, I know if you want to do Beyond Meat small meatballs, you can do this. There is a meatball bond meat. There's many different ways to do this. Even with some tofu, you can do this. Really thinly sliced, prepped kind of and, and marinated the same way. And there it is. I'm getting those marks that I want that would typically be grill marks in an actual Vietnamese kitchen or on a Vietnamese grill. You know, in Vietnam, they're doing that over, you know, they're hunched down a little bit, doing it over smaller grills and small batches like this. And that's where those, those great flavors come across. You're using really small wire uh, grill tops to kind of keep the meat from falling through because they're in small pieces. But here in the pan, it gives you kind of the same feel. Now, I've gotten to a point where I know that this pan is hot enough that it's gonna keep carryover cooking process going, okay? So I've turned my heat all the way down to low. The pan is still hot. It's still having the same action and activity I want out of it. But instead of brushing it like we would do on a grill, I grab my hoise in, I go right in to the pan, okay? Just a touch, because you want some of that caramelized hoise in to be a part of this bond meat, okay? Pan's doing its thing. And then kind of like earlier before, with the uh, dressing, with the pickling liquid, the pickling jus, I just need a little bit more. I like mine a little saucy, just a little bit more. Okay, this thing's all about flavor. 
Don't be afraid of flavor, all right? And you just let that, let that sit there and do its thing. Turn the pan off. This is called a knob. This is how you control your flame, okay? Just turn the pan off. Let this hot pan do its thing while the product still simmers in here. I mean, you can hear it. That's actually far from a simmer. I'm using the wrong rhetoric there. Listen to that. That thing is cooking, okay? It's caramelizing some of that hoisin. It's caramelizing that marinade that we use, and this is gonna go a long way in the final product. All right, so now this is the part we've all come here for, okay? It's the part, it's the reason I'm here, it's the reason you're here, it's the reason why we do what we do. It's time to put all this together and eat, okay? So you can use Serrano's. I know I've been to Vietnam. Serrano's are really popular. Um, I've even seen some places on the West Coast use Thai finger chilies. Um, I've seen a lot of different pepper configurations. Um, I think standard for people um, who have a, a kind of a, a moderate spice level, just to use jalapenos. Just get a good, beautiful jalapeno at the store. And again, we want real nice thin slices. And I like to use the tips, so like I'm just getting to the seed point in the pepper. So I'm gonna switch peppers, because I don't want the seeds. I just want the pepper, the flesh. I don't want too much pith. And when you start getting to the seed point, you're gonna start getting into the pith. So we can save these for later, a nice salsa or something later on. We've got some jalapenos. Now we've got uh, a red jalapeno that we're gonna work with. And we're gonna kind of do the same thing right there, set that aside. We've got our cilantro ready to go, don't need to season it whatsoever. That's gonna go into the, the top of the sandwich. But first things first, we're gonna get this nice, beautiful baguette going. Now the thing with Vietnamese cuisine, Vietnam was actually colonized by the French. So it's why you have this great tradition of great coffees, um, breads, sandwiches, crepes, things of this nature. These are all kind of the fusion of that French and that Vietnamese kind of coming together for all that time, okay? So it's really important you get a good baguette. You want to be nice, kind of chewy on the outside, but you can feel it soft in the middle. And when you're getting a good, you know, it's just like we're talking earlier with, with, the, with the, uh, the meat product. These things all have their own fingerprint. It's individual. So to make a good sandwich, you want to kind of find where the good spot is, you know, that we want to make the sandwich out of here. So I can see it's fatter at this end, kind of gets to a skinny point and then it's thinner down here. I'm gonna make my end point at the end of the fat piece. We're tilting a little bit, it happens. Don't worry about it, I'm a professional, guys, we'll make it. And then you wanna cut the other end off, like so, okay? So this is gonna be our actual sandwich bread. Use your hand to hold it down, and we wanna slice about three quarters of the way through. Bring that knife out the other end, real soft like. I'll open that up real slowly. That's what we want right there. And we're gonna come in with that spread that we did earlier. And my wife calls this the slather. We just gonna, we gonna slather up in here, okay? Just like it's some suntan lotion. And it's on a hot day, we gonna slather that spread in there, okay? Don't be afraid. This is gonna help coat your palate, okay? This is like the enjoyment of the experience of the sandwich itself. A lot of it is right here in this spread. All right, um, another good little thing that you can do is you can put your bread in the microwave for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, depending on how thick it is. Okay, this bread is pretty thick, so I'm not gonna be ashamed of that spread that we have in there. Okay, set that off to the side. Next thing, we're gonna come right in with our pork that we seared off, okay, in the cast iron. I'm gonna spread it out evenly. Now, remember what I said before, this is not a Big Mac, okay? That's probably almost too much meat for my liking in a bond me, okay? But I got some hungry crew here, they need to eat, so I'm gonna make sure we hook it up, all right? But that's, that's a little bit much, that's about what you want. And then we're gonna come in with our cucumbers and our carrots. Now, the cucumbers have been sitting at the bottom, okay? I have the carrots on top. With my hand just now, I'm flipping it over to get those cucumbers from the bottom so I can spread those across the top like so then go in after the carrots, okay? A little bit of that pickling juice is still kind of attached, that vinegar that we seasoned up. Now you can use some daikon radish, you can use some regular radish. Um, I didn't do that today, I wanted to make sure that we kind of just, you know, have stuff that people have on hand to use, all right? 
Then we want to come in with our cilantro. You want some of these stems. Okay, a lot of times people are, you know, you know, especially in the West, we're quick to take all the stems off of stuff, all the, the, the sticks and seeds out of stuff. Sometimes you want that, okay? In this banh mi, you definitely want that. All right, it gives it that rustic feel like they would make it back in Vietnam. And then we're coming in with our peppers, just like so, evenly distributed throughout. Sriracha, we all have it, we all love it. Don't be afraid, okay? And then also the top, a nice drizzle of hoisin. You can do it underneath. I like to do it on top because we already have the hoisin on the sandwich, on the meat at the bottom. Now, I don't know about you, I like to eat. That's a banh mi, that's a sandwich. That's what we do in the lunchbox right there. So we got through our banh mi. It was vibrant, it was delicious, it was fresh. It was nice and soft in that bread. Now we're gonna get to our salad, because what's a sandwich without a salad combo? So we're gonna do our dressing. We're gonna hit it with that white wine vinegar. Now you can use seasoned rice vinegar, but again, because we're gonna be using a sugar component, I'm gonna go with just the solid white wine vinegar, fresh organic agave nectar, and a little bit of fish sauce. Again, this is just gonna tie everything together from the beginning of the meal to the end. Now, because we hit that agave nectar in there and that vinegar, I'm gonna go ahead and whisk that together real quick just to incorporate it before we slowly start to incorporate our sesame oil. So, if you don't have a big time mixer for something small like this, it's no big deal. Just get it with your hands like this and slowly drizzle it in. Now, I'm using a spiced sesame oil. My bowl's moving on me a little bit, get control of it. There we go. The same process, drizzling in ever so slightly. You can see it in the color, you can see it in the viscosity and the thickness, you're getting it where you want it to be. And I can tell you right now, I know that's right. Once again, even with all your senses, my eyes can see it, my ears can hear how much easier it is, and the nose knows, I can smell it right now, I know where we want to be at. Now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of uh, lemon zest like we did earlier because I didn't use the lime, I used the lemon. I'm gonna use the lemon again, okay? Continuity of flavor profile here is what we're looking for. Not too much to overpower it, just a little zest, essential oil, get that citrus in there. And I'm telling you right now, that's gonna be sweet, spicy, smoky, earthy, a little umami, and it's gonna be delicious. Now we've got a little bit of mixed green here. You can use a little bib lettuce, you can use a little wild frise, you can use a little spinach. I've used a little mixed green here. Almost everybody has that in their refrigerator at home. We had our shredded carrots from earlier. We're gonna add some of those. We also had some of that good stem cilantro. We're gonna add some of that in there. Now you can pull some of them off. Earlier we kept them all on. Take a few of them off this time. Just to mix it up a little bit. Now a little bit of fresh basil leaves that I picked right off. This you want to take your time and pick some of the best ones. You want to mix the bigger ones and smaller ones. The ones that are really big, we want to tear them just a few times. No worries. Now, we have the cucumber and the banh mi. We're going to add the cucumber again into the salad. This time, we're not going to split anything up. We're just going to take the end off and we're just going to run our knife through it. Try to keep the pieces nice and even, but just let the knife do the work. This is going to give it a nice cool crunch to kind of go with that spice and that heat from that sesame oil. Now you can use a regular sesame oil, that's fine. You can use a flavored sesame oil. I know at the house, I have a couple of mason jars with some flavored sesame oils. Some have uh, peppercorns in them, some have garlic in them. Whatever you want to use, make sure it's a sesame oil though, okay? Now we've got our dressing. And I'm, I'm a chef, so I'm gonna use my hands to mix up this salad. I was told a long time ago by my mentor, you know what they're gonna say about you if they see you mixing your salad with your tongs? They're gonna say you're silly. I don't wanna look silly on camera, all right? I wanna get that right in the middle of the plate. And you always have this thing where some of the bigger pieces, like your cucumbers or your shredded carrots, are kind of at the bottom of the, of the bowl, kind of at the bottom of the dressing. That's okay, because that means when we're getting to the end of the salad, we can dress that right on top, just like that, and use them to really get the salad looking the way we want it. And I'm gonna use my towel here to clean the rims. Make sure your rims are clean. Now that 
fresh salad right there is gonna go absolutely phenomenal with your banh mi. Bam, so today in the lunchbox, we did an amazing Vietnamese trifecta with the coffee, the banh mi, those flavors were amazing. My belly is still warm. It was nice and spicy and delicious. I finished it off with a nice, light, airy, crispy salad because you don't need fries. So remember, this is the lunchbox. I'm your man, Chef Demetrius, AKA Hosanna Bax. Join me next time. I'm gonna bring in some fresh Lebanese lavash bread, doing a nice spread with that, some grilled lamb, another salad, and another coffee to make sure that you're lit, get it cracking, ready to go with me in the lunchbox. See you next time.